Thank you for joining me for this short video on the femoral triangle block, uh, how to perform it and some tips and tricks. Uh, here are my disclosures and I do want to give a shout out to the Complete Anatomy app from 3D4 Medical which will feature in this presentation. In addition to the Block It Like It's Hot podcast that I do with Jeff Gadsden, this QR code will take you to our episode all about knee arthroplasty analgesia and you get some tips and tricks from there too. So I'm going to cover the indications for a femoral triangle block, uh, the innovation of the knee in brief, give you some scanning tips and then finish up with a block itself. So what are the indications for a femoral triangle block? Well predominantly I'm using it now as part of my knee arthroplasty regional anesthesia regime uh, and this has certainly become the mainstay of where it's being used in modern day practice. But there are other procedures that are performed on the knee where this may be beneficial or you might want to perform it just to get the saphenous nerve for any other lower limb procedures. If we focus on the cutaneous innervation of the lower limb, it's clearly quite complex and there are a lot of nerves involved. But if we focus on just what the saphenous nerve contributes to, you can see it's an isolated cutaneous innervation. But we know that the innervation of the knee is much more complex than that. And this diagram comes from my full knee arthroplasty um, lecture that's also available on YouTube but again let's take out all of the things that are not relevant and we'll focus just on the femoral triangle contribution which may also involve some aspects of the obturator nerve uh, and again if you look at another diagram here you'll see again looking at the quadrants of the anterior aspect of the knee there are lots of um, nerves that are relevant but if we just focus on what you may well get from a femoral triangle block you can see how it takes out that medial aspect of the knee. Now let's have a look at the anatomy in a little bit more detail. However, before we go any further, I do want to address that uh, elephant in the room, which is, hold on a minute, aren't we talking about the adductor canal block? Um, and actually, I think when we first started performing the block, we called it the adductor canal block, assuming that we were performing the block in the adductor canal. And what we're starting to understand with knee arthroplasty analgesia is actually we want to be performing our nerve block slightly higher up in that subsartorial tunnel um, and there are a number of papers looking at a whole host of places along that path in the thigh as the femoral artery passes down the thigh where we could perform the block and I'm going to tell you what you know one aspect of that which is to perform it at the apex of the femoral triangle. What do I mean by that? Well let's have a look in a bit more detail. I'm going to highlight sartorius here and then under sartorius I'm going to highlight adductor longus. And the key thing we want to do is we want to identify the point when the medial part of sartorius intersects with the medial part of adductor longus. We want to look at that medial intersection and that we call the apex of the femoral triangle which is highlighted um, with a star at the apex and the green uh, outline being the femoral triangle. The next thing I want to introduce to you here is the vastus medialis muscle, which you're familiar with seeing with those slightly more distal approaches to the adductor canal. And then we're going to zoom in a little bit closer here. Again, I'm going to highlight the sartorius muscle, and then we'll peel sartorius out of the way. Um, and then we'll know that the saphenous nerve lies with the superficial femoral artery. And then there's this vasto adductor membrane, which you can imagine we've just pierced through. And now you can see the nerve to vastus medialis lying on the vastus medialis muscle. Okay, so that's all great with the anatomy. How do we find this apex of the femoral triangle? Well, I recommend you start on the upper or mid thigh, slide the promedial and move cordad and kephalad until you identify the prayer sign. And I will come back to that. Once you've identified that prayer sign, which is a surrogate for the apex of the femoral triangle, you then slide your probe lateral for needle insertion. So how might that look? Okay, so let's imagine we plonk a probe on the middle of the thigh and actually here you can see this probe is placed quite high up in the thigh and this is the corresponding ultrasound image that we get and now if I play that video um, we can see a vastus medialis, a ductor longus and that sartorius with the superficial femoral artery in the center of the screen we're going to slide the promedial, and at this point we're going to slide, we've got a bit too much adductor longus on the screen there, so I'm going to slide, slide down, we'll get to the point where we get the medial border of adductor longus meeting the medial border of sartorius, which you can just see highlighted there. At that point, you're going to slide the probe laterally. As you slide the probe laterally, you'll see a bit more sartorius, vastus medialis, and a femur deep to it. Uh, and you can imagine if you were to place your needle in from that lateral side, we can see that depression in the muscle, 
that's where we would be inserting our needle. We think that nerve to vastus medialis, which is important for neoarthroplasty and analgesia, lies somewhere in that plane between sartorius and vastus medialis, and the saphenous nerve lies right next to the artery. Okay, so this is all great. Can I add an anatomical overlay for you? Okay, so we're going to now get to a point where we find the apex of the femoral triangle. Let's add in some labels. There we've got a sartorius, a ductor longus. Deep to that, you've got a ductor magnus. We've got vastus medialis on the right-hand side. And you can see the superficial femoral artery and the superficial femoral vein. The apex of the femoral triangle is there at that medial intersection of the two. Now, you remember that prayer sign? Well, what was I talking about? Well, here's that prayer sign. You can see how the prayer sign, the two hands mimic that adductor longus and the sartorius muscle. So, how are we going to find these targets in the femoral triangle? Let's imagine that we found our apex of the femoral triangle. We're now going to slide laterally. I'm going to scan up and down and just look at that apex. Just see if we can identify some structures lying in that interspace between sartorius and vastus medialis. If we increase and release pressure and, and blot that superficial femoral vein, we're looking for the saphenous nerve to lie right next to the femoral artery. So if I add in some labels over here, you'll see this is where I believe you can see that nerve to vastus medialis lying between sartorius and vastus medialis and the saphenous nerve lying right next to, the, next to the superficial femoral artery. Now slightly thicken that white line just deep to sartorius uh, and between sartorius and vastus medialis because that's the vasto adductor membrane. And that's a, that separates that physical space between the saphenous nerve and the nerve to vastus medialis. And we believe that you need to pierce through that vasto adductor membrane in order to get your local anesthetic around the saphenous nerve. Although... There is a very nice video by one of my uh, mentors, Kijin Chen, on YouTube that showed he just did uh, a saphenous nerve blood and did manage to get some local anesthetic to track up to nerve to vastus medialis. But that, of course, requires a volume of local anesthetic. I've highlighted those nerves there. And the aim of a femoral triangle block is to hydrodisset that space between those two areas, between sartorius and vastus medialis, to get the nerve to vastus medialis and then pop through that vasoadductor membrane to get the saphenous nerve. I'm now going to show you what that looks like in reality. Okay, so here's an image which looks very similar to the previous one. You're going to see a needle coming in from the right hand side of the screen. It's going to pop through sartorius and vastus medialis. A little bit of air there, sorry about that. And as we're injecting local anesthetic, you can see that needle tip hydro dissecting our path. Now, I think I'm approaching where the nerve to vastus medialis was opening up that space and I'm going to pop through the vasoadductor membrane to see if I can now get to the saphenous nerve. I'm going to inject some local anesthetic around the saphenous nerve. And I'm going to pop over the superficial femoral artery. You can see the vein deep to it. As I inject local anesthetic here, you'll see the artery squash down, which really does tell me I'm deep to that vasoadductor membrane. And now we can see the nerve to vastus medialis and the saphenous nerve as two separate nerves in two separate compartments. Lastly, I'm going to finish up on medication options. Most of the time, we tend to use long-acting local anesthetics such as bupivacaine, levobupivacaine, or ropivacaine, uh, although there are other agents available that you can use. And for a femoral triangle block, we tend to inject somewhere between 10 to 20 cc's of local anesthetic, although I am aware of people using larger volumes. Of course, what you inject depends upon what you ultimately aim to achieve and what other nerve blocks you're performing. I hope you found this video useful.